The resignation today of the Roads Agency Chief Executive Nazir Ali sparked mixed reactions across the country. The opposition to Urban Tolling Alliance, which was granted an urgent interdict in April to stop the launch of the e-tolling system in Gauteng, it said it imagined the e-tolling matter might have been a catalyst for Mr Ali's resignation, but there's been a huge amount of pressure apart from that. To unpack this further, we're joined from our Cape Town studios by Sipo Siepo, who's an independent political analyst. Sipo, uh, what's your take on this? Obviously the pressure was mounting for Nizir Ali, but he clearly feels he can do no more. Yeah, I think uh, that's correct, but it's important to understand that the pressure is not only on him, it's also on government. But uh, there's a positive side on, uh, of it, that uh, what we see here is uh, what you call cit citizen activism. And uh, that augurs well for democracy. And uh, the issues that are very simple, it's uh, the opposition to urban tolling alliance, they are saying they're not opposed to the idea of improved uh, roads because they understand the contribution of that infrastructure to our economy. What they are concerned about is the issues of consultation and also issues of transparency. So in a sense, uh, we have not seen so, such a, you know, a revolt uh, against the government on something that makes sense. And as most people said, this was one of those things that were unexpected. But uh, what it has done, it has uh, forced a, a, a dialogue between the citizens of this country as well as uh, a government. And what the court has actually done is to side with the people. And uh, some people have even suggested that uh, uh, Judge Prince Law is uh, one of those people who uh, is uh, always on the side of, of the underdog. But uh, if you, one looks at it, the government has not done a, a good job in terms of persuading people and, and make them understand that uh, what we see here is uh, for the good of the country. Part of it is also because the government has not been able to deal with this perception that there's a lot of corruption taking place both in, in government as well as the private sector. So I think what the case will do is they will force a further transparency. But uh, I don't think that it should be seen as a, a question of who's running the country. It's a question of a, a proper management and consultation of the people. And that in itself is going to be something that will entrench democracy. And uh, some people have actually said uh, what we see, uh, we see here is a, a new social consciousness. Isn't and we there should be excited that citizens of this country are participant in their own uh, uh, dire the direction of our democracy. Uh, isn't there a danger here too, though, that you have something that is unpopular, uh, which is legal, and it's mobilized against? It's still going to have to be paid for. And uh, The sense is that government was taken by surprise several times on its handling of this. Uh, the Gauteng government was taken by surprise, a new lot of MECs and a new Premier compared to when the consultation happened with Sanral and the politicians. At first, national government seemed sympathetic, then backtracked, realized that it had to worry about those bonds. So have they got a grip on it now, do you think? Uh, will they get a grip on it? Or is e-tolling going to be scrapped, those gantries going to be removed, and we're just going to have a bigger fuel levy or tax by some other means? I think uh, the government has come out very clearly uh, as a way of coming the markets and uh, also rating agencies to say what it is not, uh, what it will do is to try to make sure that uh, there is no uh, it, it will meet uh, its obligation uh, with regard to the debt. But uh, what uh, the issues are be that have been discussed on the table is uh, are there other alternative, alternative means in which uh, you can actually collect uh, uh, this levy that uh, would have been collected uh, from uh, the, the, the uh, tolling? And that is what the uh, people are grappling with. Because even the opposition to urban tolling alliance, it is not saying that we should not pay. It simply says uh, we would like to be convinced that uh, this deal is not like the arms deal. But we also want to be convinced that uh, there are no other better alternative methods to deal with this issue. But there's also another concern that people have also raised. That is, uh, this is one of those uh, deals that seems to be evergreen. That if you have a debt, most people will say, well, within five years, 10 years, I'll pay the, the debt. There has not been a lack of a, a, a transparency in terms of how far and how long will this debt be serviced. So those are some of the discussions that will emerge and the dialogue that citizens will have. But in terms of the, the payment of the debt, the government has already indicated that uh, it will not uh, allow itself to default and to uh, give uh, South Africa a bad name. So, uh, but yeah. I think I also think the, the question is, uh, even the people who I think the question is not whether we, it'll default. It's uh, a question of confidence as whether it's got a grip on the situation and, and also how it's going to pay uh, if it doesn't do e-tolling. Mm -hmm. But shleno has got a question for you, Sipa. Sipa, hi. Um, just a question for you. Uh, 
Was there anything in the documentation with regard to these tolls that showed that when the debt has been completed, uh, uh, when the debt has been paid off, then the tolls, hmm. the toll charges will, toll charges will actually disappear. So, would would we pay for tolls for as long as the debt's around? When the debt's finished, there are no more tolls. Was there any such thing? No, that's exactly the point I'm making. What has not happened is that there's been a lack of transparency on this matter, and the the uh, the opposition to tolling, urban tolling alliance is uh, calling for a review, and the whole idea of calling for a review is to, to make those document, documentation transparent to the citizens of this country. And only on that basis can we begin to talk about uh, whether this deal is uh, ethical, whether it's defensible and all that. And this is what the uh, government is being pushed to. But what I see as a discussion between the ANC alliance is that um, there's a, almost a, what appears to be a retreat to say, let us also consider other alternative means of paying. But I do not think that we can run away from the issue of transparency that the, the citizens have actually put on the table.